Welcome to Electron Online. Here's the next example of how to deal with a distributed load. Notice there's three sections to the load. There's a section where we have the load equal to 1,000 newtons per meter for the first four meters. Then we start at zero and increase to 2,000 newtons per meter for the next six meters. And then we stay at 2,000 newtons per meter for the last four meters. Also notice that we have a supported A and a supported B. Therefore, the load here and here will cause a clockwise moment, but the load between the, the beginning of the beam and A will cause a counterclockwise moment. So there's a, those are competing moments against one another, and we have to take that into account. We're going to use the same technique as we used in the previous example. We're going to set up a table, and I wanted to show you how we set up the table. The table now will include five rows, Row 1 and row 2 represents each individual section of the load. Since we have three sections, we have to divide the top two rows into three segments like this. And then we're going to combine all the information into the next three rows like this. The first row represents the forces of each individual piece, the total force by each portion of the load. The next one will represent the x-coordinate of each of the moment, or I should say the x-coordinate of the centroid of each individual load distribution. The third one will be the total moment of all the loads put together. The next one will be the total force contributed by all the various load segments. And finally, the x-coordinate of the centroid, which is equal to the ratio of the total moment divided by the total force. Let's go ahead and calculate it now. 1,000 newtons per meter over a distance of 4 meters, that's a total load of 4,000 newtons. Here we have a varying load going from 0 to 2,000 newtons over a distance of 6 meters. That's a triangular shape. The area, let's go ahead and write on the board here. So this would be area 1, this is area 2, and this is area 3. The area represents the equivalent force. Area 2 is equal to a triangle. That's 1 half times the base of 6 meters times the height of 2,000 newtons per meter. That is equal to 6,000 newtons. So this second segment is a 6,000 newton segment. The last segment is 2,000 newtons per meter for 4 meters. That's a total of 8,000 newtons. 4,000 newtons, 6,000 newtons, 8,000 newtons, the force contribution of the three segments. Now we need to find the x-coordinate of the centroid of each of the three segments. But the pivot point will have to be at A because any load to the left of A will cause the beam to turn this way any load to the right of the beam will cause the beam to turn this way. So I have to have a point of rotation right here at A, which means that this will be a negative centroid, a negative distance. Since it's a rectangular piece, it'll be at the halfway point between 0 and minus 4 meters. It's basically a minus 4 meters relative to 0 meters here. There's a distance of 6 meters. So at the end here, we have a minus 4 meter point. Therefore, the x coordinate of the centroid is at minus 2 meters. The x coordinate of the centroid here of this piece would be two thirds of the distance from there to there because it's a triangle that would be 4 meters. And here the centroid would be at the halfway point, 2 meters from this end, at 6 meters depth. 6 plus 2 is 8 meters. So that gives us the three centroids of the three force contributions. Now we need to find the total moment, which means we add the product of these three together. And I'll show you what this means. This is equal to minus 8,000 newton meters plus 24,000 newton meters plus 64,000 64, newton meters equals, and my box is again not quite big enough. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 24 plus 64, that's 88 minus 8,000, that's 80,000 newton meters. In this box we're going to add up all the forces. The total force 4,000 plus 6,000 plus 8,000 that's 18,000 newtons. And finally to find the x-coordinate of the centroid we divide the total moment by the total force 
80,000 divided by 18,000, or 80 divided by 18, gives us 4.44 meters. 4.44 meters, which is the centroid of the entire load distribution that takes into account that we have a negative moment on the left, positive moment on the right. 4.4 meters puts it right about here. And there is a total load acting at that point, force total, which gives us the moment relative to point A. 4.4 meters, remember this is relative to point A. Now if we want to find the loads uh, supported by A and B, if we want to know the reaction force at A and B, there's this force at A, this would be the force at B. We then go ahead and put our pivot point right there and we find the force at B. The moment at A must equal to zero, the, or I should say the sum of all the moments about point A must equal to zero. The first one, I add the force total. Force total is equal to 18,000 newtons. Acting at the x coordinate of the centroid, 4.44 meters. Minus, because it's in the opposite direction, the force at B acting at a distance of 10 meters away from point A. Which means that force at B is equal to 18,000 newtons times 4.44 meters divided by 10 meters, which gives us a force at B equal to times 18,000 divided by 10 equals 8,000 newtons, which also means that the force at A is equal to the total force minus the force at B, because there's only A and B that can support the total load. This is equal to total load is 18,000 newtons minus 8,000 newtons, which means 10,000 newtons is supported by support A. And that's how we find the answers. It's a pretty great way to do these types of problems. It beats doing integrals. It definitely makes it a lot easier and cleaner to work out the answers to a problem like this. And that's how we do it.